Okay, in this video, we are going to create um, a 608 bearing. So you should have now set your working directory to your Creo folder. Once you've done that, we are going to go to new and we're going to call this uh, 608 underscore bearing. Now you cannot have a space in a Creo name, so you have to have underscore, and that will save to my working directory. <clears throat> Once you've done that, your model tree, uh, your model environment will open up. You can select your planes by hovering over. When you select them, they will go green. Um, so you have three different planes here. We will require the front plane. You can also select your planes from the model tree here. So I'm going to select the front plane. Once you've selected the front plane, it will be green and we're going to go up to sketch. OK, so now we are in a two dimensional view of our sketch. We're going to come across to rectangle, click down and choose center rectangle. Go to the middle of the environment, left click once and drag out a rectangle. <coughs> we then come up to the dimension tool and we are going to dimension this as seven millimeters by seven millimeters. You double click the dimension, type in the number and you must press enter on the keyboard. So that has changed dramatically. I'm going to now do the vertical height, seven millimeters. And then if you press refit button, your drawing will come into the middle. OK, so I have a seven millimeter by seven millimeter square. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is go and get the line tool from the line chain. And I'm going to go um, above the center line and I'm going to left click to start my line from one side to the other it will lock and then left click again and then I'm going to press the scroll wheel to disconnect I'm now going to use the dimension tool to set that dimension um, actually it's come up as 1.4999 I want that as 1.5 millimeters the distance from the center I'm now going to go and get the line tool again and underneath the center line, I'm going to do the same again, left click and then one more left click and then scroll wheel to disconnect. Again, I'm going to go to the dimension tool and I want to dimension that to be 1.5 millimeters away from the center line. I press refit that will bring that into my middle um, now I'm going to disconnect so I'm going to delete now this line and this line and across on the other side that line and that line leaving me with two rectangles that are seven millimeters by two millimeters I'm now going to come across to the circle tool. I'm going to click the circle and I'm going to put it in my center and I'm going to drag out a circle that is inside both rectangles and click once to stop. I'm now going to dimension that circle. This gives me a diameter here. So you'll need to find the diameter dimension, double click it and I'm going to set that dimension, that diameter at 4.2 millimeters diameter. <clears throat> I'm now going to use the delete tool again, which is here in the sketch menu. And I'm now going to delete 
the parts of the circle that are between the two rectangles. And then I'm going to delete parts of the rectangle that are between the top of the circle. You're going to need to zoom right in to make sure that you haven't missed it. As you can see, there is one there. I'm using a scroll wheel and my cursor to zoom in, and there is one there. So they would have affected the sketch. Make sure that you are deleting all of this sketch. So again, I'm going to delete this line here and this line here, and then I'm going to have to zoom in because there are tiny bits of the circle that is still there. Okay, I think I have done that now. We will see when I choose um, sketch in a moment or when I complete the sketch. Now there's one more final thing. So that is the profile, okay, that we are going to revolve of the bearing. But we need a center point to revolve around. So we're going to come up here to center line and we're going to create a center line below the rectangle. So left click once, make sure it's horizontal and left click again. That creates a center line below our profile. But now we need to dimension that center line. Um, it's correct distance away from the center of this profile. So this measurement is from the center line to the bottom of the profile. We are going to make that four millimeters. Okay. You can see now the sketch has been shaded in. That means that I must have deleted all the correct lines. If your sketch is not shaded at this point, you might have a rogue line that you still have not yet deleted, so it can't see it as a solid uh, shape. OK, I'm going to press OK, and that completes that sketch. I'm now going to choose the Revolve tool. It has revolved because it knows I had a center line in the drawing in the sketch so it's revolved around that and it has revolved it 360 degrees you can adjust that and it can be less than so you can, um, any size there but uh, we want that at 360 a full revolution and then I'm going to tick OK so we've made the casing for the bearing we are now going to make the actual bearings that go in the casing. To do this, we are going to choose the front plane again. Okay, so again, you can choose it here and it selects my front plane in green. And then I'm going to choose sketch. Now I'm going to draw the bearing, but I'm going to use another feature in the Creo um, toolbox here called clip model it is the fourth icon from the right in the lower toolbox if you click that it chops the model in half it hides the geometry located in front of the sketch plane that I want to draw on I'm going to scroll my real mouse so I can zoom in on the part that I want to draw and now I'm going to draw a circle in the center point, which is where we started our drawing, I'm going to click and drag out a circle inside that area. I'm now going to use the dimension tool. Um, now, if you did click on the center, you should only have one dimension. If you accidentally clicked maybe higher or lower than the center line or left or right of it, um, then you will have another dimension that you will need to adjust to zero. I'm going to double click and I'm going to make the diameter of the ball bearing four millimeters. So I'm going to type in four and you can see it sits inside the housing by um, 0.1 of a millimeter. Now 
I'm going to draw a center line from the top, a vertical line down across the ball or across the circle and scroll wheel button to disconnect. I'm now going to come up to the delete segment tool and I want to delete the left hand side of this circle. It should be two clicks, two quarters of the circle, leaving you with a semicircle. Now, I'm going to create a center line on the vertical center. I'm going to left click and then turn it vertical and left click again. And then I'm going to tick OK. My sketch is here. I'm now going to ask for it to revolve that sketch. Click in and it knows the center and there we go you can see my first bearing has been produced okay um, so I have one bearing um, sitting in the housing so I'm going to tick OK and now we're going to use a new tool called pattern instead of drawing that again and again I'm going to pattern it repeat it so I'm going to click pattern okay and we have a an axis point here that we drew at the start um, on the first sketch so i'm going to choose under dimension choose axis and then i must reference the axis the revolve the center of the bearing okay the center of the bearing casing and now you can see if i center this it is set up for four members one two three and four um, revolved around 360 degrees a 90 degree angle between each one now you can play around with this by spinning this so if i turn this the angles between each one is now 31 degrees and we have four now if we increase this number so we actually want 12 okay but it can't oh I've put 112 there so we didn't want that so we've got there we have 12 there at 31 um, and you can see you're gonna get different you can change how many you're gonna get or the distance between now if I just okay that so that's sitting at 30 degrees 12 I'm gonna press OK and we have our 12 balls for the 30 degree angle between each one from the center okay that is our bearing our 608 model of a bearing but there are just one more process I would like to do now we're going to put a radius on the casing so we're going to come up and use the round tool and we're going to look for the edge of the casing as you can see I've got the edge here uh, there and if you hold over the, ed the word edge will come up and I'm going to click on that uh, the radius we're going to put in is a point three, so 0 0.3 um, will give us a slightly radius edge and we're going to do that on all of the edges of the casing. So I'm going to come down. It will set at 0.3 again because it will set the previous radius unless you want to change it. So I'm now trying to find the edge of the smaller casing inside. And then this one here. I'm now going to rotate it around and do the other side. So again, hover over and then we're going to find this one be careful you have to must you must be careful what you're clicking on don't click until you know you are on the edge that you want um, let's see there we go and now i've applied a 0 0.3 radius to the uh, edges of the bearing casing it's orange so um, i'm still in the process when you see orange on there you can still change it if i tick ok it will go grey. If I want to edit again, I can go back to it in the model tree, right click 
and go up to edit definition and it will allow me back in if I wish to edit. I'm going to tick OK. I've now completed the model. I'm going to now do file and save. It will come up in my uh, working directory. You do not need to type anything in, you just press save. OK, that's the first video. The next video will be how to apply material finishes to make this as realistic as possible. You may be able to use this model in um, another tutorial of mine later.